Hi, it's Dr. Weiner, and I want to talk to you about how fillers are or are not affected by energy-based devices such as radio frequency and or lasers, or plasma, in fact. So let me just digress a little bit. There's several papers that have been published that say RF and lasers don't affect, even IPL, don't affect uh, fillers. But there's a rumor going around that you shouldn't do it within two weeks of injecting. But how does that make sense? What changes with the fillers after two weeks? Nothing in my opinion. Now I inject mostly fillers using cannulas and those are mostly done subdermally. So most of our devices only go into the dermis. Some go a little bit lower, but most only go into dermis. So I've never been even uh, concerned about these devices affecting fillers. However, there are some people that inject fillers into the dermis. HA fillers I'm talking about mainly. And are those affected? Well, let me tell you that they aren't, and I'm gonna give you really good reasons why. So let's take a look over here. So, Thermod, Excellus, those RF devices that heat up the skin without penetrating it, only get to 60 degrees at most. The reason being is that if you get hotter than about 42 to 45 degrees, on the, derm on the epidermis, you're gonna burn it. So they have to cool the epidermis off, and so they really can't get very hot. They cause denaturing of the collagen tissue, but really not a very long lasting effect. You have to do several treatments, and the effects are very, very mild. So when you get to RF microneedling, you get to coagulation, which is between 65 and 70 degrees. So that is sort of the sweet spot because it doesn't give you the ton of downtime that's associated with ablation, which is hotter. And it gets to coagulation, which gets you new collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acid formation within the skin. So when you have lasers, lasers get you to uh, ablation and vaporization of tissue. That's 100 degrees Celsius. So that's going to get you new collagen, elastin, and hyaluronic acid but there's a little more downtime and a little more risk associated with that. But what's very interesting is when I went to Uppsala, which is Galderma's headquarters for Restylane, I asked the professors and scientists about how these energy-based devices affect the fillers. And I got a very interesting answer. So Restylane and Lyft and all the Restylane products are placed in an autoclave for approximately 15 to 20 minutes. And you know how hot it is? It's approximately 115 to 100 degrees Celsius for 15 to 20 minutes. So how can they affect these fillers if they're only going on, the laser's only going on for milliseconds, or if microneedling is milliseconds, this might be a few minutes at that temperature. So there's absolutely practically impossible to affect fillers that are placed in the dermis or below the dermis. So I routinely inject into the dermis and do my RF microneedling minutes later. So you don't have to worry whatsoever about energy debased devices affecting the HA fillers. Now the other fillers like calcium hydroxyapatite, which is radius, or Belafil, um, they actually have even higher temperatures, so you don't have to worry about that. Belafil is like 160 degrees Celsius. And then Sculptra obviously is not affected at all either. So don't worry about doing fillers before or after having RF microneedling or lasers or regular RF. It's not going to affect the fillers whatsoever. Thanks.